I'm here at the grocery store with Matt because he's about to make some nachos, but I'm picking up some groceries for us too. Cilantro, heirloom tomatoes, bananas, watermelon. Uh, Matt renamed this place Haggers. No, it's called Haggers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're at Hagen's. <laughs> but uh, Matt's gonna make us some nachos, which is awesome. I'm actually making tacos now. Oh, tacos? tacos? Okay. Tacos. Okay, well, Tacalos we're doing tacos. Style. Maybe I'll fire up the grill because I have some steaks at home. I love buying meat here. My favorite cut was this oh, stuff right here. Snake River Farms. But look at the price. $50, not per steak, per pound. One doesn't make sense to pay $50 a pound, which I would almost never ever do that. The cool thing is if you know how to cook, you know how to make like a regular piece of meat that's more affordable, delicious. What kind of beef did you get today for the barbacoa? Oh, chuck. Chuck, right? Which is a more affordable cut. Eight bucks per pound. See, look at that. And it's gonna be delicious. Yeah. Typically they use the, the cow head or the cheek. Oh, uh -huh. is that cheap though? Cow head or cheek? No. No. I like finding those cuts that no one really thinks to buy or are still really affordable and to make them delicious. So that's what Matt's gonna do. He's gonna make barbacoa, um, use a pressure cooker, which is another little tip in the kitchen if you wanna make affordable cuts delicious. Use a pressure cooker. How long are you gonna put the meat in the pressure cooker? Probably about an hour, especially because it's not too thick. Um, but so the kind of tacos that I'm gonna make today are gonna be, um, they're called Matamoro style. That's because like uh, Brownsville, it was part of this town called Matamoros. Brownsville is the town I'm from. And uh, this style of taco, I actually even had to look up what it was called. And I guess it, it could be called Matamoros style or hold. Tacos Estillo Matamoros, which I think that just translates to Matamoros style tacos. So anyways, there's a style of tacos from my area that I can only get from there. And I love them and I like sharing them with people when I can. And I'm making barbacoa today. Now, barbacoa is a specialty where I'm from as well. Um, South Texas, North Mexico, all that area. It's like barbacoa town. Like every Sunday we'd have barbacoa because every place like you can go buy it by the pound. Now, typically it's cow's head that's buried in the ground. We don't have cow's head obviously. And I'm expecting you're not gonna have cow's head. This is what you can do, especially for a family of, damn, how many kids you got? Like five? Five girls. <laughs> and then there's two adults. Yeah, so. And my sister's probably gonna come over. Yeah. And then Sean, Mike. So we're gonna use Chuck yeah. because, you know, a lot of people, we're not gonna spend, you know, I don't know, for like maybe four short ribs, it's gonna cost you 30 bucks. We're not doing that. Short ribs are delicious though. Uh, that's beyond the point. Chuck is great because it's got good marbling so it's gonna break down nicely. And when cooked low and slow, it's nice and fork tender. And that's what I want for the barbacoa. Wow, that's like nearly a perfect fit. That's what she said. <laughs> so Benji just set up all the ingredients nicely. Damn, I need you at home, dude. Look at that. That's what I'm saying, baby. <laughs> there we go. For this family roll right now, I'm gonna make the barbacoa in a pressure cooker just so it's quicker. I don't have to braise it for so long. It's only gonna take an hour. Currently right now, why I am searing this, the reason why I sear it before tossing it into the pressure cooker instead of just straight up, because what you do is you form a crust, which creates like, it's called a fawn, which is more flavor. The more color, the more flavor we create, because what we're doing right here is called the Maillard reaction. It's the natural caramelization of the protein. It's gonna create more flavor in the whole situation. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm just searing it for short. Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. About to happen. You got tongs? Uh, I got the tongs that annoy the hell out of you, right here. It's alright. <laughs> these ones, look at <laughs> Let's just use uh, the giant ones, huh? Yeah, or, or these ones. These ones won't annoy you. These ones won't annoy you, right here. You're in a house with five girls, this is what you got right here. <laughs> oh no, how about, how about Karopi? Oh, nice. Um, and then I got one up on that. No, I like, Bam! I like this one right here, though. Okay, show them this one, though. This oh, is, yeah. This is, it's the best. Very girly. <laughs> Wow, even your measuring cups, dude. Yeah, oh, well, because we're, we work with them. Oh, really? Yeah. 
They have a store in Vancouver I saw. Oh really? Yeah. So these drag guys, they're called chile wajillos, and typically what you want to do is uh, reconstitute them. I'm taking the seeds out. The reason for that is, uh, is they're bitter. You have to reconstitute them, which just basically means like bring them back to life so they're like soft enough for you to blend them. And I don't really need to do that step because this is just going to get tossed in with the braise. So this just goes straight in the pot. Same thing with like all the other stuff. I'm good right now, brother. Thanks. <laughs> All the meat seared off. Now, I could just toss my ingredients straight into the pot, or I could use this right here. This is called the fun. You know what that is, right? Oh, yeah. That's all flavor. That's the good stuff right there. That's what we do. This is family meal. And some of that broth that can go right on there. Spices, spices, spices. We've got clove for nice warmth. And then we got bay that goes in. Little oregano and Benji. This is not Mexican, I'm assuming. So typically I would say like Mexican, but this is totally fine, Mediterranean. It's all for the braise. There we go. Family meal, barbacoa. Okay. There we go. We'll see that in an hour. All right, this should be good. That smells really good. This is the barbacoa. Uh -huh. Just came out of the pressure cooker. Oh yeah, that's falling apart. It's already is that a gravy that you're gonna have? It's just like something I'm gonna mix back in. It's, oh. I, don't, I don't need all of it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's nice. It's just to mix a little bit back in. It smells so good. Then this will save out for the tomatillos. The meat, now we just like start pulling it. See, it already just wants to give up. Oh, there we go. Money. Is that all the meat? This is all the meat, yeah. This was good thing we did that. Two whole chucks. So usually uh, when you go to like barbacoa spots, uh -huh. they have what's called uh, cacheta, uh -huh. where it has like everything mixed in from the mm. head. The oh. cheek, the fat, the tongue, all mm, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Haggins should sponsor us. Yeah. This smells so good. See, that was just a little bit of the, the liquid I put it in. Oh, you wanna really? see? Yeah. Yeah, you wanna try it? See if yeah. it needs more salt or something. There's a fork right there. Mmm. Definitely more salt. Mmm, that's bomb right there. That's really good. It's good? Mm hmm. Nice. It's really flavorful. That goes in the taco. Okay, so Matt is gonna help me make a carne asada. And what was this one? This one is a flank steak, right? Yeah, because they didn't have skirt. We would have preferred skirt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's fine. We'll just go. With it. Are we putting this on the griddle? Uh, I think the grill. The, right? the grill or the griddle? What do you think? I think, I think the, the grill. griddle. The griddle? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you get a good sear. Oh, interesting. See, I would not have thought of it. So Matt's gonna cut it even thinner. That's interesting. Oh, that's why you need it to be super sharp. Sharp. Yeah. My bad. It's probably not that sharp. Interesting. And why is that that you want that? Um, so we get more sear, like, on the mm, surface area. Got it. When oh, you sear it like that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I've never seen that. Whenever I do carne asada, I just follow whatever random YouTube videos. And I never even thought of this. Usually I follow carne asada YouTube videos from people that, one, probably aren't even Mexican, which probably is not the right move. You probably want, like, a Mexican. Or two, isn't a chef that worked at a restaurant when they had to do it. 
Plus Matt. Matt grew up in Mexico. Oh, well, not <laughs> Mexico. Much, like yeah. a, like like an extension of Mexico. Well, you have to cross uh, a checkpoint three yeah. hours north of my town just to keep coming to the country. So they also have border patrol at our airport. That's how you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So anyways, the point I'm trying to make is I've never really seen carne asada being prepared. So this, this is fascinating. I'm kind of, my mind's blown right now because I would have never thought to do this. Really? To make it thinner like that. I would yeah. have thought you want to make it thick so that you have a little bit of rare on the inside uh -uh. and the fact that would you call that butterflying pretty much i guess yeah butterflying butterflying and then uh but keeping it connected uh -huh. interesting and then today it's just salt and pepper right salt and pepper salt and pepper I that's eat, it eat. not even lime juice no that's at the end at the end yeah, see yeah, the yeah. lime juice is at the end at the well end. let me know if you're mexican and you live in mexico <laughs> how do you do your carne sada um because wouldn't you say there's also different ways to do it? I mean, you could just buy it from the, the butcher. Over oh, yeah, there. that's probably. Yeah. There you go. And there you go. Um, now I know. I want to vlog this not only for me and Judy, because I'm going to start doing this now, but also for you guys, um, if you've always wanted to do carne asada. Because carne asada is the way to go. For me personally, when I go to taco truck, now I'm really happy that I can do this on my own. Matt did say you could marinate this the day before. If you're going to do a marinade, you said onions. I would say puree onion, uh -huh. garlic, uh -huh. and uh, maybe like you could do spices like cumin, black mm -hmm. pepper. But no lime. Uh, you could put lime actually. That'd be good. But in today's case, the lime will just be at the end, yeah. right? Yeah. Good. Which makes me think we have one lime. I should go get some more limes, dude. We could go get limes if you want. Well, no. I'll just get someone to bring us limes. Okay. Limes. You need, I, I don't know. We should have bought way more. I mean, Matt's got barbacoa right here mm -hmm. going in oh, the yeah. pressure cooker. And he's doing a carne asada. Did he We're gonna have cut a fit. That? He like, he like filleted it or whatever. With a mandolin? No, with just a regular knife. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So we're going to salt and pepper these and then do it. So you're going to get some authentic tacos today. I'm excited. We could doctor that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a spicy guacamole? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's the one good. it's the one that have at the um taco trucks. Mm. And we have a whole bowl of it too for oh backup. Oh my gosh, we're gonna yeah. put that on everything. Mm-hmm. Oh Yum. if it lasts long. Thank you. So Matt is now massaging avocado oil into the meat. And what does this do? That's just lubricating it for when we put it on that really mm -hmm. hot pan mm -hmm. and get a sear. Are you gonna put salt and pepper right now? Yeah. Here, you I'll have, do you it. You only have the grinder one, huh? Oh, nice. Is this good? Yeah, it's, perfect. It's not coarse. I'm it's sorry. Right. I'll just be sparing me with it. I mean, we'll, we'll use it for something else. Is that enough? Yeah, it's perfect. There we go. Okay, so you said no pepper though. You'll do that after Yeah, this? I'll just do it after. I see. So we've got the grill ripping, ripping hot. The cast iron, I mean, this is, I mean, it's super hot. That's the way you want it. Oh yeah. And we're outside because it is gonna get super smoky. Oh baby. Oh yeah, I definitely like that steering. Probably brings out a little more flavor. Yeah, you see what I mean? More yeah, yeah. Dang, and man. Like, this could be thinner. Like at the grocery store, it's yeah. probably thinner because they have a deli slicer. Mmm. Thinner the better. God. Judy's gonna be so happy. She loves carne asada. Mexican food's her favorite. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Very similar to Filipino. Yeah, a lot of similarities. Got some lime juice on there. So the other day I went live on my channel. Uh huh. So Benji also got some skirt steak. I'm gonna chop this up and this is gonna go on the, the queso flamiado. So there was also these tacos that I still love to this day called beef steak. And they use uh, skirt steak, but they chop it really thin. As you can see, I'm trying to like slice it as thin as I can with this knife. And uh, that's, that's what they do. It's just really thin chopped steak in the same style of taco that I'm gonna make today. 
So for these, what I want to do is I'm going to chop it up like this, and then it's going to go in the same skillet as the cheese oh. on the side. Yeah. And then people, all the meat, all and then you could just like grab it as you want with a tortilla. Oh. Oh, and that skillet kind of keeps it hot. Yep. This is better, in my opinion, than Mexican restaurants. <laughs> well, in Washington, yeah. So I would never think to do the things that you're doing if it wasn't for you showing me the skillet on the grill with the tomatillos roasting or whatever. What would you call what they're doing right now? Uh, yeah, they're roasting. Yeah, roasting on the on that uh, gr griddle, uh -huh. and then on the other side you have another cast iron sitting on there. Uh -huh. So the cheese is melting, and I kind of understand why you do that, so it doesn't burn. Yeah, it's indirect. It's just freaking <laughs> awesome. Now I know because I'm gonna do this whole thing, and even this, I wouldn't think to chop up the meat like this. And it looks so good. And the surface surface to meat ratio. Uh huh. It's so high, so you get all the flavor. Yep. I was just gonna grill it all thick, thinking it was already kind of thin. See, like this is too thick, but it's fine. I'm just gonna so chop you, it up. See, for see? me, I actually like that red, but you're saying if you're doing authentic, you wouldn't have that. Nah, you want it to be like this. Huh. By the way, no one's gonna mind. This is gonna be delicious. It's not the pink part I'm worried about, it's the thickness of the steak, so I need to like cut it extra, is what I'm saying. Now we can put this on the damn skillet with the cheese. Oh yeah, you see that? Mm -hmm. Money. Zoom up a little bit, okay? Money. Oh baby. There we go. So we've got tomatillos roasting off for the salsa. There's the queso flameado with beef steak. Solid. This is what Benji was talking about, by the way. I, I should just close it? Yeah. Should I keep the heat on high still? Yeah. Okay. We want to get that cheese all melty bubbly. Okay. There we go. By the way, I love, love, love my grill. I always use the charcoal grill but I've been loving my natural gas grill, which is connected to my house. You can use propane, of course, but you gotta convert it because you just have on the fly, ready to go. By the way, not sponsored, but thank you. Thank you, Charbroil. Thank you. Isn't that good? Oh, <laughs> got some stickers. Matt is taking these really soft tomatillos, putting it into the blender to make a salsa. Yeah, we're making a little salsa. Mm -hmm. Let me guess, there's going to be cilantro, okay. lime, okay. onions, yep. salt and pepper, uh -huh. uh, garlic. In what? Salsa? In the salsa? Yeah. Oh, it's, really? It's already got the garlic, remember? What do you mean? I'm just going to zhuzh up the avocado one. Oh, got it. Yeah. We're, we're eating good today. Okay, so this was like a, a salsa that my friend and I would drive like five hours to get because we didn't know what the hell it was called. So we'd go to this little crappy restaurant, yeah. Mexican restaurant to get it. Um, it's, it's all green and it's creamy and it's spicy. With avocados? Yeah, oh, it's see. so good. You want me to get the blend tech? Sure, um, yeah. You know, maybe I'll do one serrano so it's not too spicy for the girls. Yeah. The girls, I, I think you should definitely, well, it, they'll, they'll try for sure. I think I'll keep it fresh. I don't think I need the oven anymore. We're gonna do for this salsa, jalapeno, serrano, uh, one onion. I got a bunch because these tacos are usually served with um, caramelized onions on the side. Oh, don't you need cilantro? Yeah, we need some silly. Do you need that chopped up or just whole? I could chop it up a bit here. Look at that thing go. Whenever I make anything Mexican, 
related, I always wash and have cilantro ready to go. Well, is that good? Yeah, I only need probably this bunch. Okay. The rest will be for the tacos. Cilantro. We'll need some limes. Wow. You know, when you work at a restaurant, you don't start at the top. You have to literally do all the, the grunt work. Yeah. Literally, probably prepping vegetables. All the dishwashing. Organizing dishwashing. But you get, in, in, in the midst of doing all that, you get to observe everything else. Avocado, adds pressure. Yep. We can save the soft ones for the tacos since this is just okay. gonna get like blended anyway. Oh, got it. Is that a thing sometimes? Um, you can use a uh, harder avocados for other dishes? Yeah, You'll I mean still it's- still get flavor out or will, is there less flavor in the harder? It's like the same with anything. Just like those steaks that they were selling for $50. Okay. Like you save, the stuff that you wouldn't use for other things. Like those oh, steaks yeah. that had the chain. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I don't know why they were even trying to sell those to people. Cause what there's people that don't for, know any better. What would you use that for though at a grocery store? Burger yeah. meat, grind it, I don't know. Oh man, that would be some good burger. I know, you could call it like Wagyu grind or whatever and sell it. See, I never knew until I met you and you told me about that. Let's see if that's enough avo for this. What are you gonna put that in, like a little bowl? Yeah, a little salsa bowl. Salsa bowl. Like salsa bowl. I should probably plug this in, huh? That would, that would probably help. <laughs> uh, do you have some sort of oil? Like olive yeah. oil or anything? Yeah, yeah. I've got olive oil and avocado oil. That's gonna be spicy and good. Avocado oil? This is avocado oil. Sweet, okay, avocado oil in the avocado, that works. It's gonna be nice and spicy. Dude, we love, me and Judy love spicy. <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna be spicy. Like it's like hurting your nose? Yeah, I can't wait to try it. I only put one Serrano. Wow. Maybe the garlic too? <laughs> Yeah, it's good though. So, um, this is a avocado salsa, which I've always wanted to see how to make this. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it a while back. Oh, really? Yeah. Add oil. Really? That's so good. It's nice, huh? And it's interesting how those peppers come through. Well, you'll have salsa to save if you want. Okay. Is it gonna get, is it gonna get through the hole? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Don't we all hope? Sometimes you overshoot and make too much, but it's good to have too much. There you go. Almost like a guacamole. Yeah, you this is great with chips. When you go to Mexican taco trucks, is this what you're putting on? Uh, this and like a habanero one too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. You're just getting the oil or the fat. That's funny. I was like thinking, she's gonna dump it out. It's gonna be this epic. Thing. <laughs> now I have some uh, queso fresco in the fridge. Yes, I'll get that. Do you want the queso butter. fresco in a spoon or in a like squeeze bottle? Oh no, you could just like crumble it up into a bowl or just take oh, it out. Got it. I'm gonna put it on the tacos. For the tacos, do you like cilantro or no? Mm, no. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it out of some. Some people think it tastes like soap. Some people get the soap gene. What is that avocado thing called? The, the, um... I just call it an avocado salsa. Oh, just avocado salsa. Okay. Yeah, so that's perfect. I could just like grab chunks and like, okay. yeah. I'm gonna bring it over to you. Oh, sweet. This is cheese, queso fresco. Yeah, it's a uh, queso Oaxaca.
I think it looks cool. Honey, how excited are you right now? Uh, so excited. There it is. No, wow. no, that's a salsa. Oh. Honey, Thank on, you. A, on a scale of 1 to 10. A 10. 10? 11. It's an 11. 11? <laughs> Whoa. When the kids that's say it's 11, that, that means it's really good. Thanks for making like 100 because. <laughs> <laughs> Happy that we get to enjoy this without the littles. Because <laughs> then we could relax a little bit. <laughs> but the, yeah, baby. Mom. Hello? Oh, you're dripping. It must be good. It's so good. <laughs> This girl's loving it, but of course she prefers her Mexican meats on rice. Sean, one out of ten, how is it? Because I know you, you're like a food critic. You only go to Canlis unless there's something else. <laughs> For Taco Thursday, ten out of ten. Taco Thursday, baby. Cheers.